today we're going to be looking at gloves. We're going to do a brief little dive into the different types of gloves, not all the different patterns because that would be a very long video. We're going to look at all the different types. We're going to look at how wear affects these types of gloves. We're going to look at special patterns and we're also going to be giving some tips and what to look for when you're buying, trading or selling these gloves. I'm going to be recording this video kind of in one take ish just so I could use my mouse cursor to point out subtle differences and things like that. So stay tuned if you want to learn a little bit about some gloves. So something important to note about gloves is that there is a float cap of 0.06. Uh, what does this mean? Well, the green here resembles what the float can be for a pair of gloves. This is the rule for every single glove. As you can see, only a tiny little portion can be factory new, but a really big portion can be field tested while worn battle scarred. This makes the price of factory new gloves extremely expensive, along with the price of minimal wear gloves. We have the vice gloves here. These are the token rich person gloves. In my opinion, maybe the Pandora's box are up there too, but the knuckle here, we can see that this scraped up. This is a pair of really good minimal wear gloves. These are 0.07 and they still have these scrapes here. You can see that's because these are pattern dependent. You could have a great float and still have these scrapes and you could have a bad float and not have these scrapes or have similar scrapes to these because of the pattern dependency. This is true for most sports gloves. However, there's a couple exceptions for gloves with different textures. The Pandora's boxes. Notice here is that there's barely any scuffing on the knuckles here. And would you believe me if I told you that these were actually field tested and not a good field tested? These are 0.35. As a general rule of thumb, you need to inspect the knuckle of any glove that you're going to purchase or trade and make sure that it looks clean. There's exceptions, obviously, with the sport gloves when it comes to these different textures, like the mesh we have here. And on the vice gloves, we had that triangular pattern. Here's one of the different variations of sport gloves. It's the Scarlet Schmegma. I hope I pronounced that right. These are 0.24. Notice that the knuckles look relatively good on this too, but the texture doesn't match any of the two that we've looked at so far. So what's the takeaway from this? There's a couple different textures in the line of sports gloves and they wear all a bit differently. So when it comes to float, buying a glove, paying overpay and stuff like that, you should really check out and consider the differences and if the value is worth it. And here we have a pair of hedge mazes. These are unique in the fact that they're the only gloves with this maze-like texture, hence the name. And these are actually field-tested gloves. They are 0.18, so they're really good field-tested, but it's something to note with this glove specifically. They wear pretty well compared to other ones. They wear similar to the Scarlet Schmegmas or the Big Games with that nice flat texture. These don't wear bad at all. You could get a pair of field-tested ones of these that look great. On to the gloves. These gloves are all relatively the same in the fact that they wear the same. The higher the float, the more scuff they get, the darker they get. It's simple as that. Pretty cut and dry. They'll get wear around the seams and the color will fade out. But with these gloves in particular, the Moto Gloves Spearmint, people will look at the pattern for the amount of blue on the hands here. People will look for overpay for the amount of blue here. Now, if you look at a different pair, as the float goes up with these gloves, you'll notice that there's a general sense of just wear and tear on these gloves. They don't look too terrible. These are 0.37, so barely field tested, almost well worn. And a bit of a callback to what we spoke about a little bit earlier, the amount of blue here. These are pretty run of the mill, probably go for normal price. Um, not too sure, not well versed in the spearmint trading community, but we move on. All right, so we're gonna keep it pretty brief with these uh, last couple of different types of gloves. These are the specialist gloves spotted by the torture that's on the hands here. And when you're looking at wear and tear on these gloves, a lot of people look for a clean torture. What they mean by that is that the words torture look nice. That's pretty much it. Now they will get scuffed up as the wear goes up and the float goes up, but nonetheless, if they have a clean torture, they will warrant some overpay. So if someone's like, hey man, I got these specialist gloves, they're field tested, they're 0.25, but they got a real clean torture. Unless you're really into that, I would stay away from it. It's kind of a lucrative thing to trade for. It's kind of a, not a very liquid item. With that being said, there's a couple of special patterns that I'll show you right now. We have the Crimson Kimonos. Something to note about these is that they don't all come with the red down here. You can see that this is fully red and so is this side. So this is considered a pretty high tier Crimson Kimono. There's a whole tier system associated with these gloves. I'd recommend Googling a Crimson Kimono guide uh, CSGO or something like that and it'll be like the first thing that pops up. It, it's a steam post uh, Some guy goes into extensive detail about these gloves All right, so here we have a pretty decent pair of crimson kimonos as well But you can notice that there's not a lot of red here and there's not a lot of red here. It's like half red I'm not sure what tier these would be, but I'm assuming they're pretty low tier, especially because there's like no red here. So these should go for about market price. These are minimal wear. Crimson web is red, emerald web is green. Pretty self-explanatory. But 
there's some special characteristics of these gloves that have to do with the webs we can see here. This is what's called a centered web on both of my hands here. It's right in the center of the glove and you can see it perfectly. This is a two time centered web. This is the best pattern for this glove. It's pattern ID 330. These are in field tested. These still get a lot of overpay because of this special pattern here, these two centered webs. This is possible on both the emerald and crimson web. And it's something you should look out for if you come across a pair of these gloves because it does warrant a lot of overpay. There are situations where you could have one glove with a perfectly centered web and one without. That could still warrant some overpay. It's something that you'd have to maybe look for similar gloves and see what people are selling them for. But you should definitely be aware if you come across a pair of these gloves. All right, now here we have the Specialist Gloves Fade. These are beautiful. These are a great pair. This is a full fade in factory new. What does that mean, a full fade? Well, there's no gray on these gloves. As we all know with fade patterns, the higher the percentage, the better the fade. That's not typically the case with these gloves. They don't really have a percentage associated with them. One way to really tell the difference between a good fade and a bad fade is just simply by looking at the amount of gray. If there's gray in the fingers or on the wrists here or down here, it would not be considered a full fade. However, it would still be considered a decent fade because the bulk of the glove has that colored texture. As you can see here, there's a little bit of gray, but it's still considered a full fade. Now I'll show you a pair of bad fades so you have a little bit of a comparison. So here we have a pretty bad fade gloves. Uh, you can tell there's a lot of gray here. These wouldn't warrant too much overpay, if any, in my opinion. They may because this side over here is fully colored. The right side's fully colored. The only issue is this right here. However, I highly recommend that you once again Google, there's a full guide on these gloves and a tier list associated with them. So if you come across these gloves or you're buying gloves and somebody wants a ridiculous amount of overpay, you should double check with that guide. Do your due diligence before you spend a lot of money on something. One of the hand wraps, right now we're wearing a pair of hand wraps overprint. These are Pantseed 504 and 0 0.06. These are the actual number one lowest flow in the world. A couple things to note about these gloves. There is a whole tier list associated with the overprints themselves. These flowers and stuff can be ordered in different directions. Obviously it's like a hand wrap. So like the arrows can be on top, the flowers can be on top, the polygon little pattern right here can be on top and that could warrant some overpay. Now, once again, I refer you to the Steam community if you Google overprint guide CSGO, pop up a whole tier list uh, around it that warrants overpay and all that stuff. All right, so here we can see like a, a different pattern. I couldn't get the inspect link for these in the game, unfortunately, but this is like a, an arrow pattern. As you can see, arrows, 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 arrows. It's like a tier two or something like that. Once again, whole guide on you, uh, Google, check it out. Hand wraps wear all generally in the same way. They're just gonna get more dingy, less bright, more scratches and stuff on them. So higher flow, worse gloves, lower flow, better gloves. Driver gloves, one thing, knuckles. It's all that really matters with these boys. If you don't got a clean knuckle, you're not getting any overpay no matter what wear it is. These are a pair of factory new driver gloves, Snow Leopard 0.067. Very nice gloves, very clean knuckle. Perfect knuckle actually, quite a bit of overpay. Uh, we're probably looking at like $10,000 total in this day's market, some, somewhere around that ballpark range. Now we have a pair of the King Snakes in minimal wear. The same rule still applies, even though they're not snow leopards. So we have scuff knuckles, scuff knuckles equal bad. These will go for market price. Like I said, driver gloves, all about the knuckles. All right, so I've decided not to waste you guys' time with the Broken Fang, Hydra, and Bloodhound gloves. They're all the exact same. There's absolutely no special conditions when it comes to these. 